Hello, I am Dr. Stacy Wallach, owner of Town & Country Veterinary Hospital in Town & Country, Missouri. Today, we are going to show you what happens when you leave your beloved pet for a dental examination and cleaning. We are going to show you what happens behind closed doors. Hello, Rocky. This is Rocky. He is our four pound patient of the day. He's getting his teeth cleaned. So we are gonna show you what happens with him today. Say hi, Rocky. So the first thing that happens when your animal is dropped off is they get a full thorough physical examination on every patient that's being hospitalized every day. So Rocky, let's listen to you. Come here, kiddo. You want to show the camera your bad teeth? Come here. He doesn't have many left. He's just got a few. <laughs> I don't know if you can see those. How old is Rocky? Rocky's 11. After we're done with our thorough physical examination, this is the time that we would get blood work and run it in-house. The best time to do blood work is the morning of. It's going to be the most accurate. If your veterinary hospital does not provide in-house blood work, then it may have to be done prior to. So make sure you check with your veterinarian. But you want the blood work done as soon or as close as possible to the dental and anesthesia as possible. After the thorough physical examination, the blood work comes back and if everything is normal, this is the time if the animal is going to have anything painful being done, we would start by giving the uh, non steroidal anti-inflammatories for pain control because that takes about a half hour to take effect, so we want to make sure we give it early enough. Okay, Rocky. After that, we're going to go ahead and go ahead and give the pre-medication as an IM injection, which is an injection that goes into the tissue. What's it with smaller dogs and the issues that they have with their teeth? So smaller dogs don't have as large of a mouth. Everything is compressed, so they have the same number of teeth as, say, a Labrador Retriever, but they're compressed pressed into smaller areas so you get a lot of crowding and with crowding they don't have as much space they don't you know the teeth can start shifting and therefore they have more crevices for the bacteria and plaque to develop on there and also the teeth aren't as big so if you think about it you got the tooth and then you have that bacteria and then you have the plaque and tartar on top of that and that bacteria is what acts as termites and starts eating away at the teeth and if you have a tooth this small versus this big, the smaller tooth is going to be eaten away quicker. So therefore you get earlier periodontal disease, you get mobility quicker, and unfortunately they lose more teeth. And there's definitely a genetic role. I mean there are certain breeds that we see, like for instance greyhounds, I mean they're big dogs, but they have horrible teeth and they're known for having horrible teeth. Um, so there's definitely a genetic part that plays. So this is Rocky after pre-medication. He's nice and comfortable now. Um, he's going to have all the anxieties gone. He's happy. He's in his happy place. So this is the time that we are going to go ahead and um, place his IV catheter. Hi, my name's Anita. Um, I'm a registered veterinary technician. We're getting ready to prep Rocky for a IV catheter. Uh, he's very sleepy, very relaxed. So what we're going to do is we're going to shave the hair off of the front leg so that when we um, apply the tape, the tape will stick and also when we remove the tape it won't pull the hair off which can be kind of uh, upsetting to them. So right now we're just going to shave some hair off of his leg and get him ready. So the IV catheter is, a, is a, just a safety thing. It allows us to give IV fluids to keep their blood pressure up. It allows us access to the vein in case of an emergency so we can give emergency drugs. So I don't recommend anything with anesthesia, whether it be a surgery, a dental, without an IV catheter. They should all have one in place. So Rocky is being currently moved over. You can videotape Rocky being moved over. He's just going over to where we do our dental procedures. Um, we do our dental procedures in a non-sterile area. They do not get done in the surgery suite because as we clean the teeth, bacteria can shed into the environment. So we put them on our dental table that has a grate in it that allows the water to be collected underneath so the animals stay dry. Um, and as we go through, we'll kind of show you what we're hooking up to. Um, again, as I said, not all veterinary hospitals do everything that we do. Um, we, we really try to, to provide the best care. So they have IV fluids, we have all monitoring, heat support. So I'll kind of show you through what each process is and what we're hooking up to. And then that'll explain to you how we, we keep these animals as safe as possible under anesthesia. So Jason is giving a drug right now that is the induction to the anesthesia. This is actually what puts them into the anesthetic plane. 
And then what we'll do is once that drug is given, we're gonna just check the jaw tone and see if he's sleepy enough to, plas to pass the uh, breathing tube, which is called the endotracheal tube. So we'll kind of just check his jaw here. And the looser the jaw, the more deep they are in, under anesthesia. So you can see I still have a little bit of tone. He's still fighting me. So that tells me we're just not ready just yet. So we're gonna give him another minute. So the breathing tube will allow access to oxygen for the lungs and the anesthesia, uh, the gas anesthesia, and it also will um, protect the lungs from all the fluid that we're putting in the mouth. Um, we blow up this little cuff here, it, I'll show you on one of our other ones. There's a cuff right here that when it goes down into the throat, we blow it up, oops, maybe. Yes. And that forms more of a seal, which then allows if any fluid or anything comes down, it won't go into the lungs. It'll get trapped. And when we pull the tube out, it'll pull the fluids out with it so we don't get anything in the lungs. And this also allows that the gas anesthesia, when it goes into the lungs, it doesn't come back out at us. So it kind of makes for a good seal in, in the trachea. The eyes are then lubricated because when they're under anesthesia, their eyes will remain open and they can't blink. So we want to make sure that their eyes stay nice and moist so their eyes don't get dry and we don't get any ulcers or abrasions on the eyes. So things that we're doing now before we get started with the dental is we have to hook them up to their fluids and turn that on. Jason has started the, the heat support where we put a hot air, um, it, it's called a convection warmer and it produces hot air and then we cover the patient and that keeps warm air around them at all times but they can't get burned, which is really important um, when we're doing any sort of procedures that we use safe warming devices. Okay, so other things that we do is we hook them up to all their monitoring equipment. Then those can be pretty long procedures, so it's really important that we use really good monitoring devices so that we can make sure if they're under too long that they're still safe. So we use blood pressure. Uh, this is the EKG. Just like in humans, the difference is we have to clip whereas they put the little stickers on us. So the EKG is on. Okay, I'm going to show that in just a minute on the monitor. Uh, Jason is hooking up the end tidal CO2, which checks carbon dioxide levels. We never want the carbon dioxide levels or the, what they're exhaling to be too high. And we also put an SpO2, which is the oxygen saturation on the tongue to make sure that they're still getting enough oxygen throughout the body. And then last but not least, we have a temperature probe that goes rectally. Excuse me, Jason. Thank you. Can I get a uh, lubrication, please? And this, again, maintains temp temperature, so we can be monitoring that. It's very important, especially in these little dogs, their temperature can drop below 90 very, very easily. And any times they become in a hypothermic state, we can have more complications with anesthesia. So it's very important that we monitor this. And that's a reason in itself, if it's a long procedure, if they start getting hypothermic, meaning too cold, that we'll need to stop the procedure and continue another day. So we take pre and post pictures on all of our dentals. Um, that shows what we've done before and after for the owners. This is showing the EKG, okay? Depending on what drugs you use, the drugs that we use are gonna make the heart rate low, which is okay. Um, this is showing our end tidal CO2s, our oxygen levels, our blood pressure, and our temperature. So we keep track of everything. Um, this then gets recorded on a disc, which then goes into our computer system and it graphs everything out so everything is kept in the medical records. The first thing we do with our dentals is we use an um, antibacterial cleanse, and that decreases the amount of bacteria in the mouth so that the bacteria isn't being shed and it's protecting my, or my technicians, the doctors, and also the animal itself. The next step that we do in our dental cleaning is an ultrasonic cleaning. This removes the tartar and the plaque from the teeth. Um, you have to be careful about how long you're on each tooth for. You gotta make sure you get just underneath the gum line where some of the bacteria is. Um, and we'll do this on all the teeth. It's the same kind of procedure that's gonna happen at your own dentist's office. Um, after the ultrasonic cleaning, um, we're gonna make sure all the plaque and tartar has been removed. And if we need to, we'll bring out the hand scalers and use those as well. It can take anywhere from 20 to 
20 minutes to 45 minutes to just do the cleaning process on the teeth. Depending on how many teeth they have in the mouth, how big the animals are, how big the teeth are, and how much tartar there is. So there's two ways to detect that there's still plaque and tartar remaining on the teeth. One is by drying the teeth and you'll be able to see kind of like a change in color. The other thing is there's a plaque disclosing solution. Kids get this sometimes. It shows them when they're brushing their teeth appropriately. So we have this solution here that you just Q-tip onto, uh, onto the teeth. And then when you rinse it, it shows you how much tartar is remaining. And then after the plaque disclosing solution, we'll just go back in and touch up on any of the pieces of the teeth that we left. Um, and that's just to make sure it's a very thorough cleaning. Next step after the ultrasonic scaling and cleaning is the polishing. And the polishing is going to remove and smooth the surface of the tooth so there's no etches that remain from after the ultrasonic cleaning. If you leave those etches, then more plaque and bacteria have a place to hold on to and they're going to form plaque and tartar faster than if you don't polish the teeth. This is why I never recommend a wake scaling of the teeth. Um, I've heard of that before where they're going to go in and just scrape the tartar off the teeth. And that it's good because you're removing the tartar, but you're leaving all those micro etches, which is then going to allow the tartar and stuff to build back on the teeth even quicker. After the teeth are cleaned and polished, we do a full exam of the mouth and the teeth. So we actually look under the tongue in the back of the throat looking for any signs of masses, any diseased gums or anything like that. And then we come in and every tooth is probed to look for pockets. That can mean that the, there's an abscess at the root. We look for furcations, which means that we can go right at the gum line between the roots from one side of the tooth to the other. Um, we look for cavities or anything like that. And anything that's abnormal or normal, we mark on a dental chart. So we use a little chart like this. And we write in here, like in this dog, Rocky doesn't have a lot of teeth left, so we write that a lot of these teeth are missing. And the teeth that are left, we talk, is there any wear, is there any frications, is there any periodontal disease? And we write everything down so that next year when we come back in, we can determine if these have gotten worse or what the changes are from year to year. And that's important. A lot of veterinarians don't do this. Um, but if you just clean the teeth and wake them up and send them on their way, we don't know, we have no chart of or history of what actually we found to see, you know, if we have a lot of plaque this year, maybe next year we don't, or maybe this time we have a little bit of gingival recession where that gum line's moving up that root. Maybe it was one millimeter, next year it's three millimeters. Well, that says that tooth could be decaying at this point. We need an x-ray, and, and so we learn from that. So it's important to chart your teeth. Dental x-rays are a vital part of any dental procedure. Um, it is so important to know what is happening above the gum line. We can only see the bottom part of the tooth, which is called the crown. But so much of the disease process occurs in the roots. And without x-raying the roots, we have no idea what's happening. They could be fractured, they could be diseased, they could be abscessed, there could be tumors. You're missing so much. Every dog should have dental x-rays for their dental procedure. So this is an example of a tooth that looked normal on the outside. And then do you see this black circle around that root? That is, oops, well, here's on another view. This black circle right here is an apical abscess. That tooth is abscess, that tooth is disease, and that tooth needs to come out. You wouldn't have ever known that by looking at the, the mouth on the outside. And this dog is probably not showing pain because he's a dog. But dental procedures encompass a lot of different things as you can see. This, this animal alone has already been an hour and a half and we're not even finished yet. Um, between the anesthesia, the cleaning, the dental x-rays, all the modern equipment, dentals are expensive procedures. They are not cheap. And if your dental procedure is cheap, you better find out what they're lacking, what they're missing out, what, what they don't have. Do they not have their IV catheters? Are they not being monitored? Are they not having those dental x-rays? Make sure you check with whatever vet you're using to know exactly what occurs at their hospital for their dental procedures. These procedures are not cheap and they're not meant to be. Um, dental procedures are going to be more than most surgeries. Um, it takes a lot of time and there's a lot of steps and there's a lot of safety involved. So thank you very much ARF.com for coming in so I can educate people on what happens during a dental procedure where they get dropped off at that front desk. Now you can know what happens behind closed doors, get a better idea of what's happening and making sure your animals stay safe. So thanks again for coming out. I'm Dr. Stacy Wallach at Town & Country Veterinary Hospital.